Hello and welcome to iTuber, an expert channel where we talk about the latest news and trends in crypto world, ICO development and blockchain industry. Today our guest is Veridictum ICO and the speaker is the co-founder and the CEO of the project, uh, Tim Lee. Hello, Tim. Hi, Lena. How are you doing? Good. Pretty good. 10 p.m. here and 6 a.m. in Australia. 6 a.m. in sunny in sunny Sydney, or not quite so sunny. It's nice and dark outside, yeah. but I've got my coffee in hand, so I'm ready to go. Great. Thank Raring you very much for agreeing, for agreeing to, uh, on no. doing this. And yes, yeah, so let's start from the first question. Uh, tell us briefly about the project and the main idea behind it. Okay, basically Veridictum is an anti-piracy and distribution platform for the film and TV industry. And it's very much that we're trying to solve the drivers of piracy, not just the sort of the whack-a-mole type of idea of, um, uh, of piracy. It's about hitting the drivers that are causing it. Um, and that's primarily because people can't get access to content when they want, how they want, at a price point that's fair. And also that they, you know, there aren't enough deterrents out there. So we're trying to combine everything together to make sure that we hit the drivers and not just the symptoms. All right. Um, and what is the purpose of blockchain then in a project? Blockchain within the project is used because, number one, um, we're actually creating a, a, a registry in, uh, for video-based content, number one. We then uh, identify the ownership and distribution rights of any video content. We then digitally fingerprint the videos linked into that, uh, those ownership and distribution rights. And then we're actually creating a distribution structure that involves um, actually the, the creative community actually helping us create uh, a, a platform that will actually enable a white hat peer-to-peer -peer distribution. And it's the idea that blockchain is being used, number one, to register the content, and number two, to incentivize all the nodes that we actually need to actually set up the actual infrastructure. So they all will right. be providing the infrastructure for us to, to implement the white hat peer-to-peer uh, -peer distribution and the idea of being able to search and detect for not only pirated files, but other sort of registered files that might be associated with the, uh, the registration um, yeah, the registration database, the global database of registered content. All right. Does that mean that uh, this idea was impossible because uh, because blockchain did not exist before? Completely. Because if you imagine, you, you may have heard of SETI out of Berkeley University, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, where they send signals out to space, the information comes back, SETI, uh, Berkeley don't have the processing power to process that, and they send it out to 3 million people worldwide with a set of pirated content in that particular side, and we couldn't possibly hope to pay somebody two cents to actually go hunting for content or to make available bandwidth. So via the cryptocurrency structures with micropayments, that's absolutely possible. It couldn't be done before. Um, so it's very much combining blockchain and cryptocurrencies uh, primarily of the, of the heart and soul of what we're trying to do, of what we need to get this to work. All right. Um... Can you tell me why it is so important now and why it is important for you maybe personally? Okay, I'll start off with why it's important for me. Um, I wrote and directed a feature film called 54 Days, which is a post-apocalyptic psychological thriller. Uh, we got pirated, not to the same levels as, as Hollywood, but there are 116 people involved in the project. And to be honest, I was rather upset by that. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's the reality of, of, of the world, all right? So it's got a personal narrative to me, um, but it's also that we've, we've spoken to so many independent filmmakers right around the world, from the Philippines to, to, uh, to Melbourne here in Australia, and they cannot produce their next movie because they're getting 50% of their downloads as pirated you know, by pirates. And as a result, we're gonna lose those independent voices, those controversial voices, even those cultural voices if nothing's done. And it's one of those things that, I, you know, it's just going to lead to content being just cats and dogs videos and fluffy bunny rabbits and just mass-produced uh, rubbish that it just caters for 50% of downloads being pirated. So it's about, getting cult it's about getting cultural content and controversial content and edgy content and bringing that back into the mainframe, just trying to help the guys that, that actually culturally represent us as human beings. That's the real why of why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. I mean, financially, you know, the film industry loses $20 billion a year. 
So it's, you know, it's financially, that's a, that's a very important narrative from a commercial perspective, but it's the, it's the why of what we're, you know, why we're here, you know, why we're here doing what we're doing. Okay, so the idea seems very benign. And you think people will buy this? In this, because there's so much going on of so many different ICOs that promise so many different things, new, inno uh, like innovations. And now here you are with your project, which gonna fight basically the theft, right? Do you think people will buy this? I think, well, we're getting a lot of engagement from the film industry and a lot of engagement from YouTubers, from, from those that actually have, have content. Because it's not only just film and video, it's also social media theft. People are downloading videos off YouTube, they're putting it up on websites as if it's their own, onto Facebook as if it's their own. So from that side, the, the problem is, 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 is very pervasive and just getting worse and worse and worse. So from a, you know, from a problem statement, if you like, it's a massive problem. And it's equally, it can, either, it can also be extended to, for example, advertising agencies who once, they, once their video is outside of the main YouTube, Twitter, you know, all the major social platforms, it heads out into the ether and they've just got no line of sight of where that can be, um, where, where those can be located. So again, this search and detect structure can actually locate those and inform their, you know, can inform them of how, you know, how those videos are performing, for example. So it's not just the, the negative side of distribution, it's also the positive side of distribution. So there are lots of applications, and it's also, this can be applied, because we're creating the majority as open source structures, it can be you know, looked at for, for music, for, you know, for art, for art, for photography, those types of areas. We're focusing on film and video, but the whole platform is going to be made available as an open source structure, so others can actually develop solutions for other areas that they might want to look at. It could even be software piracy, for example. So at least if we've got the if the infrastructure's in play, at least it can it can actually help, especially those independent producers of, of content. All so right. I mean, fundamentally, there's the, the problem is just getting worse and worse and worse. And you know, there is a, a very strong value statement from everybody's point of view, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. So tell me about the team. Who is standing behind this idea? Okay, we've basically got uh, Sam Brooks is our CTO. He's a, a, a deep um, blockchain uh, uh, expert in, in, uh, yeah, in, and very passionate within the actual community. We've, got, we've also got uh, you know, uh, uh, our chief engineer is, uh, has got sort of 20 years experience of development. And we've got, you know, we've got a marketing team that's involved. We've also got on the advisory side, we've got some great people. We've got a guy who heads up the PWC's global blanking of banking on a blockchain uh, called a Vulcan project the global leader he's on our advisory board we've got a guy called Seth Shapiro who's a two times Emmy award-winning Hollywood producer and focuses on innovation within the film industry he's on board we've got one of the world's leaders in advocacy and purpose-based businesses is on board he took Chobani yogurt um, which is a, you know, a US based company from zero to number one purely through purpose and advocacy um, so we've got, uh, yeah, we've got uh, Linda Coker, who's a, a, an M&A specialist, ex-director of uh, Ernst & Young on board. So we've got, we've really tried to, to create uh, a team that will just you know, enable us to, to actually hit this problem, which it's, it's not going to be solved overnight. It's not going to happen a week on Tuesday. It's going to happen over a 10-year period. We, this is where we see it. And our objective is to actually reduce film and video piracy by 80% over 10 years. So mm -hmm. this team's going to help us do it. Mm -hmm. Is there an uh, escrow agent? We have. We've got a multi-sig escrow wallet as it stands at the moment. We are in discussions with a couple of dedicated um, escrow agents, just so that you know, on the basis of a you know the successful crowd sale, that will that they will actually be there to actually enable the control the controlled elements to be seen, so that, that the funds are actually dispersed. You know, appropriately, and we've got we've got we've got four people on on our multi sig wallet at the moment. We're just talking to a fifth, which will actually be you know completely independent people, so that we can make sure that the monies are actually allocated appropriately. Mm -hmm. And how are you spreading the word about the project? Are there any publications in uh, media? Yeah, we've 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 been uh, we've been on uh, we've been putting stuff out for the last eighteen months. If you go onto Google, you'll see that uh, 
we've been, you know, ZDNet have been looking at us. There have been, uh, you know, we've been in, in a whole variety of, uh, of magazines. I'm trying to think of the top of my head. I mean, a lot of the, uh, there's IT Wire, which is a major global um, sort of IT structure. We've got uh, uh, elements in you know, various niche film magazines that have been looking at us. We've had a lot of the, the, the regional press here in Australia and Southeast Asia. I mean, we put a release out uh, a couple of days ago, and we've had about 65 pieces of media coverage all linking into what we're doing. Um, and uh, we've been interviewed uh, you know, on TV and a whole variety of areas. So it's very much, we've been working on this project for 18 months. So there's a lot of layers that have been already put out there. Mm -hmm. um, so you told us about the problem you are solving with this project. And yep. in Reddit, I, uh, I just found a small thread of conversation. And there you say, I'm quoting you, collectively, over 10 years, we are committed to reducing theft and piracy by 80%. Do you think that's yes. actually possible? And how are you going to do that? Okay, I think the, if one, if, look, if you look at the spectrum of piracy, we've got, you've got the hardcore pirates that are here, and you've got the soft core pirates that are here. A lot of people, if, you know, in, in the conversations we've had with people, if they're given access to content when they want, how they want, at a price point that's fair, they will actually pay, all right? So for example, I'm a big fan of Silicon Valley, which is an HBO show, all about tech startups, all right? It's a great show. Now in Australia, we can't get it unless it's part of a big package linking into one of the broadcasters. So you know, the reality is that I know of 10 sites that have got the pirated content. Now obviously I'm not gonna look at that because that would be totally hypocritical. But it's the, it's the problem that they can't get access to the content that makes people pirate on a soft level. Now, you've got different layers going through. So it's about if you make things easy for people to access content and you have the, the deterrence in place at the same time, then over time, piracy will reduce. The hardcore piraters, you know those are always going to be there. And those are the, it's the Pareto optimality, 80-20 rule. But those, the top 20%, that's where the studios will be throwing all their legal resources at and that type of thing. This, the other 80% is about saying, okay, let's make it easier for people to get access to content. So that's how we're gonna solve it. And that's by, you know, that's by just, just giving a structure that makes it easy to access content when they want, how they want at a price point that's fair. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so then explain me, how how are you going to meet this requirement of being the fair price? Because a fair price for someone ten dollars is a fair price. For someone ten yes. cents is a fair price. How are you going Absolutely. to tackle that problem? That's a great question. A great question. Um, basically, because we're we're actually bringing together the creative community itself to help us solve the problem. So we've got the the SETI for pirated content is probably the best way of saying it. It's the um, I'm oh, sorry, pardon me. <clears throat> just had a bit of a cough there. So the, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Sorry, I do apologize, Lena. Um, it's okay. Um, what was the question again? I'm so sorry. The question I just, was, uh, how, how, how are you going to make it fair for everyone? Oh, sorry, fair point. Yeah, of course. Sorry, I do apologize. Um, it's very much the, what we're doing around the infrastructure. We're creating a marketplace, all right, with the idea that the content producers, on the one hand, all right, will have the content. And it's the idea that we bring together the market influencers in a market to actually bring together their tribes, all right, to actually collectively bid for the content. So I'll give you an example. Here in Australia, there was a boxing match that happened in February this year. Um, the local pro provider was charging $65 to actually watch the match on the, uh, on, on the screens, all right, which is, which is, I mean, for me, it's insane, but other people wanted to pay it, okay? There was a guy who Facebook Live to 150,000 people free of charge, okay? Now, okay, that's the reality, okay? But if you actually had, and I'm not having a go at the broadcast because that's, you know, that's, their, that's an outdated model that they've actually got, but it's the idea, if they had that content, maybe a live boxing match or something like that, and one was able to present it to a market influencer via their tribe and collectively they say, right, we're prepared, we've got, 200,000 people, for example, as Twitter followers, 10,000 people have said they want to pay 10 bucks a head, okay? So you then have a marketplace that bring the, brings those two together to say, here's a market-defined price, okay? Now, the producer can say yes or no, 
And the, the content, you know, the people who want to pay can say yes or no, but the marketplace is actually established at a price point that they are prepared to buy at. So it's very much, we're creating a new channel for distribution, but at a, that is actually based around the actual consumer saying what they're prepared to pay. Mm -hmm. So in that way, the price will be market defined. Okay. Uh... Then I have another question. Maybe I'm being too meticulous. I'm sorry. No, so, no, no, Lena, Lena, any questions are really valid, I promise you. Yes. So the target audience is uh, two sides, the producing side and the consumer side, right? How are you going to incentivize them to actually come to these conditions and use it? Well, that's where we go for the market influencers, all right? So the market influencers will take their commission out of the, out of the transaction. The actual platform itself will actually take, you know, will take a portion just to cover the actual expense of the white hat peer-to-peer -peer distribution. And so what it means is for the, the producer, I mean, for the, for the consumer, they get the, the price that's market defined collectively. The, uh, the market influencer gets their cut out of the middle and, and us as a platform get you know, a portion to cover the actual the cost of distribution. The producer gets a performance related structure from their point of view because there's no marketing costs or essentially no marketing costs it reduce their costs and it's a channel for distribution so for example a lot of broadcasters will sell content to a pub or a bar for you know a couple of thousand dollars this becomes a this is a wholesale channel it's like a new wholesale channel for them so and it could only be done via the crypto yeah you know, via the, the blockchain and the cryptocurrency structures mm -hmm. so let's talk about the ICO uh yeah, so um, when the ICO starts and when it's going to finish, and tell okay. us about the conditions for the participation. Okay, it started, it literally, we launched it on, on Monday night Australian time, so it was 9 o'clock UTC um, on Monday. And the basically, we're going for, we're going for a, a minimum figure of 2 million, a core target of 7.5 million, and we've got an absolute hard cap of 20 million. We're not in this, we're not in the game of actually having a completely open-ended structure because that, I find those um, just show, a, in my opinion, show a lack of discipline in relation to the amount of funds that need to be raised. Um, so the, you know, the coins, are, they're, they're, the value is about 35 cents US you know, per, per uh, Veridictum token, or sorry, Ventana token as we're calling it. Um, so it's, it's very much that, uh, yeah, it's, so it's, it's two, seven and a half, and 20 is an absolute hard cap. I mean, we're, we're aiming for our, you know, our core of around seven and a half million. That's, that would be the perfect sort of target for us to, uh, us to hit. But, they, but there is a, a, an absolute cap of 20 million built into the smart contract. Mm -hmm. And tell us about the roadmap. Okay, so basically we are, you know, the roadmap is essentially we are producing the uh, global registration of video-based based content. We've got, uh, you know, that's the, the first stage of the roadmap. The second stage is the search and detect structure. So for registered content, both you know, uh, pirated film content plus also advertising-based content. And then the latter part um, is the actual, is the marketplace bringing everything together with, you know, with the white hat peer-to-peer -peer distribution. So it's very much about the global registration uh, followed by search and detect followed by the, the marketplace. The marketplace area is where the, the bigger money needs to, to actually be seen, but very much the search and detect structure, which represents a lot of the core technology, that's gonna take us sort of you know, around 12 to 18 months, we reckon, to actually get that into a position where we've got um, sort of a commercial, a commercial ready product. Mm -hmm. Okay, another follow-up question here. Uh, so sure. what are you going to be, what, what, what are you gonna do after the ICO ends and before uh, and up to the moment when the project actually launches? Basically, we're, we're, we are making available, uh, within 90 days, we'll have the capability to, uh, read, to actually digitally fingerprint content and be able to, to track that. So that's already, we're in private alpha for that. We should have some, uh, some formalized uh, beta demos to show within the next week or so, uh, is the estimation that we've actually got. So the idea is within 90 days, we'll actually have producers, for example, formally be able to pay with Ventana tokens for the actual, for the actual service of digitally fingerprinting content. And you know, they'll be able to, to locate that content themselves as they come across it and say, here's my digital fingerprint. Here's a takedown notice um, you know, for you, for example. So that's going to happen within 90 days. So 
it's very much um, you know, it, it's very much we want to get a product out there as quickly as we can, and we're we're, we're working through the MVP, the, you know, the minimum viable product, right now, so that we can get something ready to happen absolutely at the point at which the ICO finishes. Mm -hmm. And here comes the question, uh, the favorite question of our audience: Do you have okay. any agreements with uh, exchange markets, and when we the token is going to be on the exchange? Okay, we're in discussions with a number of exchanges. Um, now, obviously, the exchanges want to to formally see that the the ICO is going to is going to complete. So we've been talking with the likes of you know Kraken and Bittrex. Uh, 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 there are a couple in Korea that have actually approached us. We are in discussions with one of the uh, Chinese ones as well, and we may be heading uh, over to China next week to do a roadshow. We're just waiting to get confirmation on that. I don't want to promise that. I don't want to promise anything that I can't deliver. But you know, we're in heavy negotiations, extended negotiations, um, and uh, you know, they're they're um, they're you know they're, they're positively excited by some of the, the opportunities that we've got because in China piracy is is out of, is if you think it's out of control in the West, in China it is insane. I mean, they're Facebook living inside cinemas. It's getting to that that stage, all right? So, yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're, we're, we're talking with a number of a number of the exchanges. Uh, we will update as soon as we get any sort of anything locked in formally. I mean, we've. I mean, it, it is that Kent's twenty two. They want to make sure that that the actual the coin is going to be um, successful on their platform. We want to make sure it's successful, and all the, all the guys getting involved behind us want to get make sure it's going to be successful. So we're all mutually aligned in that particular side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now tell me, please, about the role of the tokens in a project. Okay, basically, we need the infrastructure to um, to solve the problem, and it's about bringing the creative community and others that want to help. You know, any any parties that want to look at becoming a node and a master node, we're very much exploring those sorts of ideas, and it's the idea of them being incentivized. So the business model is where the the, the producer will pay money to be on the platform. 70% of that will be converted at spot into the Ventana currency and made available for you know, on a pooled basis for all the, the nodes involved. Equally with the peer-to-peer -peer distribution, again, any cost, any monies that are generated by the platform, 70% goes to the, the, the infrastructure. So it's the idea that um, you know, the 30% just covers the cost of maintaining the platform and, and marketing in that type of area, but the 70% is pooled. So the idea is that the, the cryptocurrency gives the incentivization for guys to make available their bandwidth, their hard, you know, their uh, computing power, um, and obviously you know, uh, that type of area. So it becomes we're, we're dubbing it the proof of discovery algorithm rather than a proof of work like Bitcoin. But it's the idea: the more computing power that's made available, the more bandwidth that's made available. Off, you know, it'll often be um, uh, sort of off-peak times. It's the idea that they, they can actually generate. You know, a healthy return on the you know, making that uh, that infrastructure available without knowing needing to know any technical stuff about mining and that type of area. So it's very much we need that infrastructure in place, and that's where the incentivization comes in for the token itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, me as a token holder, what do I get? Yes. Well, as a as a token holder, I mean we've. Clearly, because of the um, SEC regulations and and those types of areas, um, we can't uh, make available any form of profit share or, or voting. Otherwise, it could be considered as a security. And if and with all the the changes in regulation that are going through, it actually means that that could threaten a lot of position of of tokens on exchanges. So we yeah you know, we've designed this from the get go to be an intrinsic part of the platform. So it's the idea that especially those that are interested in getting involved on the to helping us with the tech and those that are interested as, as producers, very much they will get the, the direct benefit of, of the actual token itself in terms of being able to use it for the service and being incentivized. Um, so the other, other token holders, I mean, you know, we, we're committed to this for the long term. So for example, all the founders and employees, we've got escrow, all our coins are held in escrow for three years. Um, there's a, you know, we're allowing a portion, 20%, just in case there are emergencies, whatever, but 80% are being held for three years. Um, equally with the advisors, 80% is being held for, you know, for 12 months. Again, they've got 20% they can actually make available in case there are any emergencies. So it's very much, we're in this for the long term. We're committed to solving the long term problem. So, you know, as long as the, we, we get the, 
um, the engagement on board with the film industry, and we've already been talking to the studios for about a year or so, um, if we get that continued engagement, then ultimately the platform will grow and succeed, and ultimately you know, the actual token will rise. Now, I'm not saying that's the only, that's not the only value proposition of what we're selling. It's very much about solving the problem. And that's really you know, to, to re-emphasize so that uh, we're not conflicting with the SEC regulations in that type of area, because that's a major problem that's coming through the whole space, as I'm sure you're, you're the first to know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what do you think? What kind of obstacles you might face in future? The interesting thing is, I mean, we, we spoke with the um, MPAA, which is the Motion Pictures Association of America. We spoke to their um, Australian representatives literally a couple of weeks ago, and they love what we're doing. Um, but they have sort of said, look, in some ways you're going to be, bast and I use the word, uh, the, uh, the generic term, be bastardizing their existing customers. Um, and we sort of said, look, in the short term, yes, that will be the case, you know, in the short term. But in the long term, the, the way that, the, you know, certainly the, uh, the film industry needs to go is to get closer to giving people what they want, how they want, at a price point that's fair. And that's, you know, the, the whole model is being, is being, the whole market is just changing and the film industry has to change with it. So the, the challenges will be initially the early adoption from the studios. We've been talking to a lot of independent filmmakers and they're saying, look, we love what you're trying to do. We really want to get behind you. Um, you know, from, from that particular side. So we know that the, in terms of adoption, it's going to be the idea of the early adopters plus the independent filmmakers, the independent content providers, the YouTubers, the bigger YouTubers, those types of guys are going to adopt first of all. So the, 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 the challenges will be the major studios. But the, you know, we are engaging with them to say, look, this is the way the market's going. Let's see what we can do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, we are... Uh, actually done with our standard questions and okay. now you have about 40 seconds to address our audience if you have something to tell them sure i think i think the key thing is you know we this is not just about hitting people on the head and saying you know you're you're pirating it's about trying to say how do we make a model that works all right that that actually connects the content providers who put their heart and soul into content and those that actually want that content so that people get a fair go, you know, they get a fair, a fair pay for a fair, you know, a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. I mean, if, if all our bosses sort of said, you're taking a 50% pay cut, we would be pretty pissed off, to be honest. So it's, it's about trying to, trying to make content better, trying to improve the actual, um, the overall environment to making people say, let's actually, you know, th this is content that I want. I want it now. Yes, it's easy to do. Here's $2.50. There's the show. It's that, that's really what we're trying to do. And if anybody's interested in getting involved in helping us with the infrastructure as a, uh, a proof of discovery miner, then please, please, please get in touch. We're very, very, yeah, we're really keen to talk to you. Great. Uh, Tim, thank you very much for this oh, conversation. Thanks. No. Yes, no, I thank you Lee. very much. I really hope that this idea will actually kick off and you will have the uh, and the 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 project will be a success. Um, so so do we. I mean, it's it's a it's a real passion thing for all of us involved. Um, you know, it's it, and it's a movement to be honest because you know it's, sometimes you've got to say you know what enough's enough. You know, it's and people. You know, every, you know how hard it is within the the content game to to actually make a decent living. You know, we want to help. We want to help guys like you and our independent producers. You know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm, I get a bit. I get a bit passionate about this. I think, but you know, it's important. It's important for everybody, really. And I mean, I know we're going to have some people that say, you know, you're you're just nothing but uh, you know, sort of snitches and that type of thing. That's not the intention. It's about making it easier for everybody concerned. The audience, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please put like, write your questions in the comment section and subscribe to our channel so you won't miss out on the interviews we have and the latest news. In the description below the video, you'll find links to the Telegram groups with news and insights on cryptocurrencies and on how to work in crypto markets. Also subscribe to our blog on Golis, the first Russian social network on blockchain, and make money on content, likes, and comments. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Lena, very much for, for making this available. I really appreciate it. And, yep. uh...
we'll talk very soon. Yes. Okay, thank you.